How's it going, everyone? It's Classical Greg, back with some more classical music recommendations for Monday, March 23rd, 2020. And so my first recommendation is a double header that's meant to be in solidarity with Italy, which, as everyone knows, is undergoing a major public health crisis due to the coronavirus outbreak. And so these two composers are Giovanni Gabrielli and Claudio Monteverdi. And the reason I chose these two composers is because of their affiliation with St. Mark's Basilica in Venice, Italy. Gabrielli was their principal organist until about 1612, and Monteverdi became their Kapellmeister in 1613, so just missed each other. And both of these composers are known for their work in what later became known as the poly choir style, or polychoral style. And what this means is you take a large choir and you break it up into different groups. And the reason that this was done is because if you've ever had the pleasure of being at the St. Mark's Basilica in Venice, you know that it's a beautiful but gigantic structure, and this creates a uniquely resonant and boomy acoustic. And that makes it tough if you've got one big choir to hear all the different individual voices. So this was a way to create a sort of surround stereo effect, which the people of Venice um, came to love. So the first piece, by Gabrielli that I want to recommend is his canzone number 16 for 12 instruments and the recording I want to recommend is by Empire Brass on YouTube. The Vontaveri piece is his seventh book of madrigals and this came at an important time in Monteverdi's creative uh, evolution because it illustrated the so-called secunda practica which was a movement towards a more modern style of composition in which the ideals of the 16th century pure polyphony were sort of um, being ignored, and now we had more interesting and spicy harmonies with more of a focus on illustrating the text of any given work. And the uh, recording I want to recommend for this piece is by Nuovo Musica, which is a Dutch group. My second selection for today is by American composer Harry Parch, and at first listen, you might want to dismiss his music as a little oddball or a little silly, but uh, I guarantee you, you will fall in love with this music after a while. And the piece is called Eight Hitchhiker Inscriptions from a Highway Railing at Barstow, California. That's right, uh, Harry Parch lived as a hobo during the Depression in America. Um, and that's not to say that he never had any formal training on instruments. In fact, uh, he received a grant to study in uh, England where he studied systems of music that expanded beyond the normal 12 tones that make up the majority of so-called Western classical music. And in order to create this music, he had to not only create new music, he had to create new instruments. So he had something called the monophone, which is a kind of adapted viola. And that was the beginning of his uh, innovative journey. And he eventually uh, created, I think, close to 100 different instruments, which are now part of a museum. So check this one out. You're going to really love it. Number three is a bit of a downer, but it's a beautiful piece of music and might serve as an introduction to the operas of Peter Tchaikovsky. So this selection is from Eugene Onegin, and it's an aria sung by a character, uh, Lensky, who is about to fight a duel in which he realizes he's probably going to die and probably never going to see his fiance again. So he's very sad. But the lyrics are beautiful. He talks about yearning for his golden days of youth and uh, there's an incredible recording by Sergei Lemeshev, and this is pretty much accepted to be a definitive recording of the work. So recommendation number four is one of my all-time favorites. It's Antonin Dvorak's Symphony Number no. 7 in D minor. And this was somewhat inspired by Brahms's third symphony in F minor, which Dvorak considered to be really close to the pinnacle of the symphonic art form. Now I should mention that there's an important link between Brahms and Dvorak. Because when Dvorak was a young composer in Bohemia, he really didn't have much money or much recognition. So he used to apply to grants to get funding to continue his art. And in order to get these grants, Dvorak had to get sort of letters of recommendation for being poor in order to prove that he really needed the money, which is kind of interesting. And so Bra Brahms ended up being one of the people who judged the music that was submitted for these grants and for these competitions, and he instantly recognized the genius of Dvorak. And so Brahms became sort of a father figure in the sense that he advocated for Dvorak, he got him a, a deal with his own publisher, Simrock, and really put him on the map, so to speak. 
And so I want to talk just a little bit about this piece musically, because it really deserves its own episode. It's an ambitious and complex work of music, yet it's still accessible and easy to listen to because the melodies are stunningly gorgeous and it just kind of takes you away on this emotional roller coaster. The recording I'm going to recommend is George Zell and the Cleveland Orchestra. My actual favorite recording is by Carl Anschel and the Czech Philharmonic Orchestra, but it's unfortunately not available on YouTube. What are you going to do? The Zell is excellent as well. And the final selection on this video is by British composer Sir William Walton, and it is called Variations on a Theme by Paul Hindemith. Now I know what you're thinking. Paul Hindemith was not known to bring the house down with his beautiful melodies. However, Walton greatly admired his friend Paul Hindemith and decided to write this as an homage late in his life. Unfortunately, Hindemith never got to hear it, but it's still a, a touching tribute to his friend. William Walton was born in 1902 or 1903, and he lived into his 80s. And this man had a very interesting relationship with the critics and the public. I think there was one British newspaper that once described his music as harmless. Now, as an artist, you generally don't want your music or your art to be described as harmless. You want it to be either loved by everyone or hated by everyone so that you can claim that you're ahead of your time. But eventually Walton's country and the press grew to love him and he put out some amazing works over his career. And the recording I want you to listen to is also by George Zell and the Cleveland Orchestra. So that wraps it up for today. Stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll catch you in the next one.